How's it going, everybody? Josh here with the Dedicated Podcast, and I am joined with Joe Downing and Adam Pomfit of uh, Valley Rehab and Professional. They are both physical therapists who can help you with all of your aches and pains and running needs. Uh, Today, we are going to be covering shoulder health and specifically shoulder health when it comes to bench press. Uh, I'm going to just sit back and let the professionals talk here, but we're going to go ahead and let them introduce themselves a little bit. So Adam, if you want to tell me a little bit about yourself. Sure. My name is Adam Pomfer. I'm a physical therapist. Uh, I've been a physical therapist for 21 years, mostly an outpatient orthopedic. Um, I treat all conditions from neck, back, shoulder, knee, ankle. And, and if I understand right, you're the running guru, right? Yes, I'm, I'm a runner. So <laughs> I, I like I like to run. Um, distance running is my favorite. You know, half marathon, full marathons were my, um, that's where I'll be on a weekend sometime on a road somewhere and running long distances. Yeah. Awesome. And Joe, if you don't mind. I am a native to Terre Haute, born and raised, um, Northside graduate. I then did my undergrad in exercise science at Indiana State. Uh, made the trek three miles down south to Evansville to finish my doctorate of physical therapy degree. Came back, spent a couple years studying, got my board certification in orthopedics, and then specially trained in the McKinsey method, same as Adams. Um, that's kind of where I am professionally and got to the point where Adam and I are now predominantly seeing spine orthopedics and sport cases all day long. So we'll get everything from a, a shoulder injury or, or some pain with bench press to a back to an ankle and everything in between every day. Awesome. Awesome. And uh, if I understand correctly, you actually helped one of our locals here at the gym, Shane, with uh, some bicep issues, which is pretty awesome. So that's how you guys met. Like you and Shane have a Due to HIPAA laws, I can't say too much about treating uh, patients, yeah. but I, I think I know I ran into someone that, that <laughs> works out here that uh, has some shoulder issues uh, leading up to a competition. True, true. Gotcha. Okay. I apologize about that. No, no worries. Um, <clears throat> so the wonderful gentlemen here are going to be helping a lot of uh, people at Dedicated, and we're going to be sending anyone with issues as far as joy issues to them. But there's one specific thing that almost everyone who lifts weights runs into, and it is shoulder discomfort or pain, especially when it comes to bench press. So I want to let them talk about that a little bit and some tips and tricks you can do to prevent it or some things if you do, do, to do if you're dealing with it. So I'll let them have the floor. All right. You want to go first or me? Sure, I'll go first. Okay. Um, you know, with any kind of shoulder injury, this applies to hip injury, knee injury, any kind of movement, you know, joint issue, it really comes down to movement. Are you moving well? Um, and a lot of these shoulder issues, um, it really comes down to what's not moving well. Is it something in the shoulder, which would be your first guess that it might be something in the shoulder not moving well, um, or somewhere else. And um, from what, what we do know from the research, there's a 50% chance it could be your neck that's not moving well. And so it's very important that when you're having these shoulder pains, you look into other areas of your body moving, particularly your neck. That's one of the you know, people forget about how the neck moves, how the nerves are connected from our spinal cord out to the various muscles into the joint. And if your neck's not moving well, you may be feeling it out there in the shoulder. And it could be something where the patient doesn't even know or a client has no idea that the issue's coming from their neck. But like I'm saying, statistically, according to a study published a year and a half ago by Rosedale and all, um, they found that even patients with no neck pain at all Moving the neck exposed wherever the problem was with the shoulder. So <clears throat> a big question we always ask patients is, do you have any neck stiffness? I don't know. And or we, even um, the upper traps. Upper trap. That's that's neck shoulder blade. That's, that's most likely neck statistically speaking. Um, the good thing is with a good assessment, you're gonna if it's not the neck, you're going to roll the shoulder and find it there. Um, I think in general with shoulders, mobility is key. It needs to move in all directions. A lot of, a lot of people look, well, I can move it up I can move it out but how does it move back how does it move behind your back so in general I'd say for anybody that wants to maintain a well-preserved shoulder keep it mobile now don't just strengthen it but make sure you're using mobility drills as well that's actually that's actually some really good tips especially about the neck because most people go straight for the scapula or something along those lines even me who's done some corrective exercise uh, research and stuff along those lines um, typically with shoulder pains I always think of this scapula uh, above the neck. So I think that's really interesting. Do you have any suggestions for um, some mobility movements people could do? Um, I think along it's most important when you 
you can self-assess. That's the first step. You have to assess the situation before you can treat the situation. Mm -hmm. So some good tips to kind of look into is if you have the shoulder pain, do a quick check of your neck range of motion. Do you have full motion turning to your left? I don't want to stop you right. before we get ourselves in trouble with the lawyer. All this advice is just purely advice not to be taken. Educational as, information. As medical um, advice, it's just yeah. educational in general. And, and our lawyer will thank us for saying that. Yes. But yes, 100%. You know, ch checking your motion. Are, can you move to the left? Can you move to the right? Can you move up? Can you move down? And if you if you notice anything like, well, I, I can't move as well one direction, that's kind of a clue that maybe there's something else more than a shoulder in here. You mentioned the scapula earlier. Same thing. Whenever... I hear scapular pain. I'm very, very curious. How is their spine moving? So it's something to uh, definitely something to take a look at. To look deep farther into. Yeah, the, the concept uh, a lot of a lot of people will refer to in the PT world as uh, regional interdependence. Something that is not even close. It might not be in the same exact area. It has some effect down the line. And back to Adam, everything for your arm comes out of your neck, so it makes sense that it can all be related. That's very awesome. That's a very interesting way to look at it. I mean, the kinetic chain is a very, very interesting, uh, interesting moving pattern. Yeah. Humans are fun animals to watch <laughs> move. Um, you know, a lot of times after you, you know, let's, let's say for example, there's, there's no, my neck's fine. I'm not moving well at all. I'd still got this shoulder pain. I've seen in you know, my experience, um, particularly younger males just getting into weightlifting. Um, they want the ripped chest, they want the bulging biceps, and they hit that hard. Mm -hmm. And they come in, you look at, just look at the posture, their rounded shoulders, and I'll ask them a simple question, you know, what are you, what are you doing for your shoulders on the posterior part of your body? And they look at me like, uh, I really don't do a whole lot of that. And I said, why don't you throw a little bit of that into the mix? And, and it doesn't take long. They're like, yep, yeah, yeah, that was, that was a quick, quick, easy fix, you know, add some balance. And so I think, you know, with you know, if you're into weightlifting, listen to your coach because your coach is going to tell you you've got to be a well-balanced athlete. You know, mm -hmm. wh whatever sport it is, you need you need balance. So. Well, that is true. I was going to add with Adam on that. You know, a lot of times, especially young men, will work on just one plane of motion or one mm -hmm. repeated motion. And a lot of times, when Adam and I start talking to patients, it's the first thing we look at. Go, oh, you're spending way too much time forward. I mean, think about it. You move your elbow, stuck all day long. First time you try to extend, we got some problems. So it is a balance of keeping it moving in all directions. So do you think there's truth to the whole two back exercise for every one anterior chain exercise, or do you think it's a, should be greater or less than that, about equal? If you get a formula, I think that helps someone stay on task to getting some balance, then um, that may work well. You know, if, you, if it gives someone some structure anyway, um, I don't know if there's in the literature as to it has to be that that rigid i'm, I'm not sure but um that was just a, an old bodybuilders like wives tell you know, was i always do two back for one chest type deal if you find someone that has a big back they usually always have a matching chest so i think most people spend too much time looking in the mirror mm -hmm. looking forward and looking backwards um that, that's how I would, I would look at that gotcha Okay, um, so before we wrap things up, mm -hmm. um, what you both like to specialize in different aspects. So what part of PT do you guys like to specialize in? Um, what I'm good at. Yeah, I, <laughs> I, I, I really what you're good at. I, I, I like you know, <laughs> things orthopedic in nature, um, mm -hmm. you know, neck, back, shoulders, knees, hips. Um, here lately, I, I've really been interested in teaching people, as I mentioned earlier, to self-assess. You know, if, if I can keep, teach someone to self-assess themselves and keep just keep them out of my clinic altogether, that's a win. You know, you know, fewer healthcare resources devoted to coming in, something that you can do yourself. And, and that's kind of what we specialize is teaching you how to self-assess, how to self-treat, and then really importantly is how to prevent. So that's... A lot of kind of what I like. <clears throat> a lot of patients tend to, to look too much at anatomy. It's mm -hmm. like, well, I have the shoulder and that's some it hurts. I'm like, okay, something has to be damaged in there. I'm like, well, not really. If you didn't have trauma associated with it, it might not be something broken. And what we find a lot of times is if you come into our clinic with a problem with movement, something hurts to move, and there is a lack of trauma, is something with how you're moving. Whether it be spending too much time forward and not enough back or something. And our biggest goal is to figure out, well, what's driving the boat here? 
Let's see if we can change your baseline, whatever it is. Could be bench press, could be just lifting your arm up. And if we can find a movement, it's usually one that clears it up. We just teach you how to balance out whatever you're doing to prevent it from coming back in the future. So most of our patients, unless they're surgical, quick in and out the way. I mean, our main goal is to never see you again for your problem. If we do a good job, then you know how to fix it. No big deal. A lot of people go, well, is it going to come back? I'm like, well, are you going to drastically change your life? No. I go, then pay attention to it. You brush your teeth every night. Pay attention to your arm motion or near everyone it be. So a lot of our athletes, it's you got to counter the forces. Spend a lot of time here. Spend a lot of time there. That's the biggest thing. Um, I did want to cover one thing because we get so many athletes that come in and they <coughs> sometimes have too much of a anatomical mindset. Mm -hmm. And they've gone to the doctor. They've got their image, MRI, ultrasound, x-ray. And they're looking, they go, I have this torn labrum. I have this this, this small tear in my bicep. Can I go back to sport? And Adam and I were talking before we came today, looking at a little bit of research on saying, well, is that true? And usually not. Um, Adam, I think you in the numbers. There was a study published on looking at, is it college? There's a thrower's one. Oh, there's, over. well, there's actually several, you know, several studies on the MRI imaging of shoulders and asymptomatic people. So they looked at elite volleyball players, a vast majority of them had labral tears, uh, shoulder issues. One that was looking at, um, what was the sport? Uh, there's another elite Baseball level was sport. labrum. Baseball was one. Um, there was another study that was a really cool study. They looked at people, uh, the same body part, or the same body part, shoulder, on their painful side and their asymptomatic side, the side that didn't hurt at all. No limitations. They could do everything with it. Yeah. And what they found was the image looked a lot like the painful side or the painful side looked a lot like the non-painful side. And so, you know, to any anyway, athletes out there, don't let the imaging discourage you or kind of feel like your weightlifting is done for, you know, tears and things like that. They, they can hurt initially. Sure. But it doesn't mean they can't keep you. It doesn't mean you're, you have to quit weightlifting. A lot of, a lot of patients will have something on their image and have no pain. So why can't someone in, that is in pain have something that on, on their image that isn't relevant? Hmm. So the biggest thing I would encourage any athlete is, yes, you've been in the ortho's office and they've told you, well, you had an MRI, it's a bicep tear. I, I suggest you stop exercising. I just want to shake them because I'm like, no, it's a lot easier say that the shoulder might need surgery one day than doing a heart replacement because you stopped exercise or you lowered the quality of life. You lowered what you enjoyed doing. So again, a lot of times, Imaging findings are not relevant and uh, never let anybody discourage you from getting back to exercise. Not to modify, but don't stop. I cannot agree more. Exercise is one of the best things you can do for your body. And yeah. I mean, a body that's not in motion does not want to be in motion. Mm -hmm. So you're just asking for one and only thing. Yeah. And all, the body will heal itself many times. You, if, you give, if you give it the right love, you know, you mm -hmm. got to lift weights and you got to exercise and move. So. I 100% agree, and that's one of my favorite parts about your guys' uh, your guys's practice in particular, because you do take the time to actually educate people versus just like, here's what's wrong, do this, and bye. So I do appreciate that quite a bit. Um, is there anything else you'd like to throw in before we hop off here? Um, as far as shoulders go, I, th I think we covered a brief, um, brief sketch of shoulders. If you have questions, feel free to reach out. I think in the show notes, uh, you can leave our email. Um, address how to get in contact with us if if they have any other questions uh, that are more specific to their particular case. If you failed PT before with the shoulders, you need to ask yourself, did they really do a thorough job making sure they knew what was going on? Too many times I've seen patients that have gone to a clinic and don't want to name names where they go, yeah, they, they, they had four people in there and they gave me some band work and I did some upper bike stuff and I'm like, well, how long did your therapist spend figuring this out? They didn't. I go, well, they 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 treated you, but they didn't know what they were treating. So I encourage anybody that if you've been looked at and you're still having pain, get looked at by a therapist that is um, that is either specialized in orthopedic or has specialty sports trainer or something like that. Because again, you don't go to your family doctor expecting them to do heart surgery. Your, your, regular, your regular PT knows a lot, a little about a lot of things. A board certified orthopedic specialist knows orthopedic stuff really well. So back to your question, what do you like to treat? Things that move. I don't want to. See, I don't want to see the balance. I don't want to see the woman's health or the wound care. Let me see what hurts to move, and let me fix that with you. 
That's awesome. And if someone wants you guys to help them with that, what would you say is the best way to reach out to you guys? Um, my okay. phone number. Um, really, anyway, smoke signals even work if I'm outside. <laughs> um, our website's valley.rehab. Our phone our number. Contact information. 812-645-7100. Also, we're on social media, um, Valley Rehabilitation and Performance. So awesome. call us, email us, get a hold of us, and uh, we'll we'll first talk to you and see if we're even able to help you. And then if we decide that's a thing, come on in. Let's take a look. Well, I'll also have the information linked below, too, just in case you didn't catch all that. But these guys are the real deal, and I appreciate you guys joining me today. Thanks, Thanks for, having for having us. us. Well, you guys out there in the weightlifting world, I hope you enjoyed the episode. And until next time, stay dedicated. See you guys.